Hey guys, how's it going? Uriel Kame here, helping you turn your health and fitness expertise into a thriving online business to create more impact, income, and freedom. And I'm chilling with my good buddy, Mr. John Goodman here. How's it going, John? Hey, it's going good. We're actually just chilling on a rock, as you can see by Lake Ontario, <laughs> Toronto in the background. It's such a beautiful waterfront here. And I wanted to take a few minutes, I kind of smuggled him out of his apartment, so out of his condo, and we're gonna talk a little bit today about how you've built, how you've built your business, the role that content has played in it, and uh, some really cool insights that I think can really help our, our viewers here. So John, tell us about, uh, in 30 seconds, what your business is, what it does, who it helps. I run a business called the Personal Trainer Development Center. It is a business that helps fitness trainers, fitness professionals make a little bit more, uh, work a little bit smarter. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus on more the business aspect of the fitness business versus actually teaching people how to do like bench press type stuff but we do help fitness professionals and we're content based we've been a collaborative blog since 2011 at its core awesome so the website is the ptdc is that right dot yes. com the t h e p t d c dot com yeah. if you search just ptdc you'll probably get the pakistani tourism development center <laughs> that's good. i didn't even know that yeah yeah that's, i tried to get it from him that's uh, awesome it didn't go over so well <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We always learn something new. Okay, so <laughs> why did you decide to go into the kind of the B2B space of teaching other fitness professionals how to become more proficient at their job as opposed to going the route of like helping people lose weight? Good question. I was a trainer for about eight years. I really didn't didn't know even what the B2B space was yeah. when I did it. Like it was kind of one of those things of just it felt right yeah. uh, at the time. So I was, I was 24 years old. I was looking for a way to make a little bit more as a trainer because mm -hmm. trainers oftentimes you reach this point where they're just working their butts off night and day and like sure. you're trading time for money and, and all of those things. So um, so I wrote a book for trainers. Uh, don't know why. At that point <laughs> I was like mentoring trainers and stuff like that but it kind of came out of nowhere and mm -hmm. it was probably the fifth project that I had taken on. Uh, the first four failed. You know, like operating like a smoothie joint, like weird <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. And it just stuck. It just seemed like the right thing. I'd never I didn't even know what content was. I didn't even know what a blog was. Like I didn't do any research. I just kind of wrote this book and then was like, well, I need a way to get people to know about my book. So I was like, I'll make a website. That's how you get people to know about stuff. Of course, build it and they will come. Right? Um, and then I realized pretty quickly that like, I don't know that much, um, but a lot of other people know a little bit or a lot about a little bit. And sure. so why don't I just get them all involved in my thing? And it, it turned collaborative pretty early on um, awesome. and kind of grew from there. So you chose to go more the, the kind of the publishing route with your with yeah. your website, which is you know you write some awesome stuff and you have other contributors writing as well. So why did you decide to go that route? Because I think a lot of people are like, well, I can't come up with all this content. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to write every single day, or how do I even keep things organized? So why did you decide to go that route? It was a combination. It was a combination of me kind of saying, okay, I only know so much. Mm -hmm. Like there's other people who know awesome stuff. Why not just get them to share it? Sure. Uh, and give them a platform to do what I recognize that a lot of people had individual blogs and had like good pieces of information for trainers But there wasn't one central point that sure. kind of brought it all into one place I think the other piece of the puzzle was just that the best way to grow a community is to get as many people involved in that community and to benefit from that community as possible mm -hmm. so creating this thing you know the PTDC as as a place where everybody wins you know the reader wins I win and the contributor wins sure. by being a part of it kind of just just evolved naturally but you know now knowing what I know I wouldn't do it any other way yeah that's awesome so what did life look like before you started this business and how has it changed as a result of this business I mean, life's gone in a direction I never anticipated or hoped for or wanted it was never like a master plan uh, I was a trainer I mean I was I was a trainer from second year university on I went to the University of Western Ontario I did a kinesiology degree I worked at the university gym for three years before I started training full-time so mm -hmm. I was a trainer for about nine years and um, like a lot of trainers at about 24 25 years old I was I was full with clients I was actually managing client or trainers I was helping to hire trainers and stuff like that as mm -hmm. well but I was working like 6 7 a.m. until 9 30 at night basically yep. without really a break or if there was a break like knock down a blended chicken and broccoli <laughs> drink which is a real thing and it's disgusting yeah um, and I mean now like I've spent the last what four winters away. Um, I'm about to go away on my fifth winter. I'm married now. Um, I'm going to have kids pretty soon. Like just, you know, I, I, I kind of have built the life that I always knew that I wanted, but I didn't know how I was going to get where I'm still able to work with people and help people and, and spread fitness and health and nutrition, but kind of in a different way and in a way where I can dictate 
my lifestyle. Like I'm not reactive, I'm much more proactive. Sure, that's great. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to have because if you guys can see behind us, this is a lake that's frozen in the winter. Yeah. So, John, I mean, you're pretty much, uh, you're out of here winter time, which is amazing. And that's, you can't I'm wearing do long that. pants, so it's getting cold, so yeah. I'm getting out of here soon. Exactly. And that's not <laughs> something you can do if you're training clients 10, 12 hours a day. And I mean, we come from a very similar background from that perspective. And I'm sure like if you're watching this, if you're a trainer, if you're a clinician, if you're, if you're working one-on-one -on -one with people, that's the biggest dilemma is like, you want to serve, but you're limited by the number of hours you can work and you just don't have the freedom. So um, that's pretty exciting. And I guess, you know, don't get me wrong, like I miss training clients. Yeah. Um, I wish that I could still do it for like five, ten hours a week. Yeah. But it's just not the kind of job that you can do for five or ten hours a week. Like it's not fair to the client. Sure. You wouldn't do a good job. And, and I, I'm not, I haven't evolved in the way that I have from a business sense in my fitness knowledge. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I would be behind yeah. now if I were to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, but I do miss it. Like it's not like I, I stepped away from it because I knew that I didn't want to do it. Um, that was never the intent. That's awesome. That's great. Okay, so looking back, what was the fear or obstacle that you had starting your website, starting to develop some of the contents, um, maybe something that you were apprehensive about? What was that? How did you overcome that? It was consistency. Consistency? Um, consistency? I, I think consistency and reliability mm -hmm. of content okay. is, for me, uh, still the most important thing. Like Since March of 2011, we have published a new article on the PTDC every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Awesome. Um, and back in 2011, when I didn't have a ton of content, or I was writing most of it myself, or it was harder to acquire it, mm -hmm. I put such immense pressure on myself, even though like there were 20 readers, uh, to to get something out at that time. Sure. And I guess always I knew that like if you can create this kind of pattern that people look forward to, even before people are there, mm -hmm. then it's just going to work for you in the future. And so there was a ton of pressure. Um, back then but it forced me to plan and it forced me to strategize I guess my my content acquisition mm -hmm. and, and publishing and editing a lot better nice cool so obviously this is you know for some people watching maybe they're running their own show they're they're a one-person team for you what is the content side of your blog look like you're not the one I'm assuming editing and looking over every single mm -hmm. article coming in who are the key people involved and is this something that you can do as an as an individual starting off? I mean to preface what I'm about to say, I did this by myself for four years. Yeah. Uh, we have a much more thorough process now. Mm -hmm. So we have two we have two kind of types or I guess uh, categories of content. We call it long term and short term gain. Mm -hmm. Short term gain, uh, basically we're not doing anything with SEO for it, uh, we're basically trying to get a lot of amount of views in a very short period of time for that sure. piece of content. So what we do pretty much there is is we syndicate uh, for the most part. So we'll find a fantastic piece of content somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I have enough relationships in the industry where I can, I basically have permission to use at my discretion thousands of articles and videos, just repost them and I give the, the author of it a hundred bucks when we use it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it then goes to, I have, a, I call the people overlord in my businesses, so it then goes to the content overlord who yeah. takes it, essentially like gives it to Art Direction, gets it, you know, new images and whatever, puts a new title on it, reformats it, puts it out, and then we have uh, somebody who's in charge of kind of content strategy who goes out and tries to get, you know, that content to go, sure. essentially. That's short term. Um, long term's a little bit different. We aim for two long term pieces of content a month. Mm -hmm. And that's SEO driven. So we have an SEO team who looks for opportunities mm -hmm. uh, within kind of our target demographic. They know what we want to accomplish. They give us an opportunity, a keyword or something like that. We go out and we actually have a group of writers, a pool of writers mm -hmm. who then go out and write a very thorough objective piece on that topic. Nice. And we have instructions of how to kind of do that with SEO. Then the SEO team comes in, takes it, does what they need to do with it. Uh, in terms of just making sure the keywords and stuff are in the right place, we publish it to the blog, and then once it's published, then the SEO team goes out and tries to get links black. And, and we've got, I mean, blogger accounts, people on our team have blogger accounts and stuff like that mm -hmm. on, you know, places like Huffington, Entrepreneur, all of those types of things. So sure. if we need links back to pieces of content with specific anchor text, we can usually get it pretty quick. Um, but the process more or less is we have a piece of content that we take in. Our content overlord has a content calendar that we're usually two to three months ahead mm -hmm. of what we're doing. And then we have, you know, an art director who kind of helps with the imagery. And then we have a formatter who actually just kind of takes the, the Google Doc and puts it nice, puts it on the web. 
So consistency, consistency was the big fear. <clears throat> you overcame that initially by yourself and kind of yeah. having to kind of using that to strategize and think a little bit further ahead. Um, Cause that's a big thing. I know that we've had a lot of questions come through our kind of our channels through is, you know, people fearing not being consistent and not being good enough with their content. Um, but as you can, as you can tell, John's done an amazing job and you guys get hundreds of thousands of visitors a month, which is, which is amazing. So, um, knowing what you know now, actually, before I ask that question, what is one thing that you think has helped separate or kind of elevate your blog, your content above everything else and really stand out in this marketplace? Yeah, I think it was a, um, an ardent focus on our positioning, mm -hmm. on what we're trying to accomplish and on who we are and who we're not. Okay. Uh, we are a, a blog, we're a community of fitness professionals, generally four professionals sort of with one plus years of experience. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about what exercise to do, we talk about how to get you to want to do the exercise. It's kind of the differentiating. And basically what the PTDC is, is it's a collection of the best information for trainers on the internet. That's it. I don't care where the information comes from. And as a result, we're like the place that publishes all of our competitors. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care. Like it's just a matter of if, if somebody who's a competitor of ours, if that even really exists, I mean I don't really care about that. But if somebody's a competitor of ours who writes something or does something really good, like we're gonna feature it. Sure. Because it's really good and it should get out. Um, and so it's just been this, this insane focus on that message and not uh, what's the the 22 immutable laws of marketing? What's the what what number is the law of line extension? Uh, I can't even remember. You know, I have that book like, somewhere in in the library. Like like not trying to come out with new Coke every two years. Sure. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just saying this is what we're doing. We do it better than anybody else. We're gonna be the White Castle Burger. Yeah. You know we're we're not gonna try to come out with new stuff all the time. We know what we do. We know why people like us, and mm -hmm. we're just gonna do it better and better and bigger and bigger over time. Nice, awesome. All right, so I got one more question for you. So knowing what you know now, if you were to start things over again, would you do anything differently? If so, what would that be? Oh man, uh, knowing what I do now, I think the only thing that I would probably start differently is I wouldn't start a blog without about eight weeks of content ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I'd aim to be always two months ahead. Cool. And the reason for that is quite simply, a piece of content doesn't go unless you promote it. Sure. Um, especially when you're, when you're newer. And so if you're two months ahead, what that allows you to do is say, okay, I know that I have stuff ready to go. Every time that I post something, I can go out and promote it. I can go out and find other networks that are going to be interested in this piece of content and give it to them. I can spend time traveling and meeting people and shaking hands. I can spend time supporting other people. Mm -hmm. um, I can spend time researching how to write better headlines, uh, how to like format my stuff better, how to create a better user interface on my site, like all of those things that matter at the beginning that you don't need when you when you are live, yeah. but uh, but you need to you need to have the flexibility to spend time sure. on, especially early on. Absolutely. Okay, so I, I was lying actually. I got one more question, <laughs> which I should have actually asked at uh, kind of near the get go. But why for you? Why do you believe that sharing your content, whether it's your own or the people that you're syndicating and publishing is so important for your business, for your brand, as opposed mm -hmm. to other business models that, you know, people have access to with their online business. I mean, it creates expert status. Like I'm, I'm also a written guy first and foremost, which is funny why we're doing video here. Yep. Um, I believe that, you know, there's something kind of magical. There's something special that happens with a written word, even in print. Like I've paperback books, like I have a textbook, like I put stuff in print. I mm -hmm. put it on people's shelves because there's something that happens in terms of, of longevity. Like I play the long game. Yeah. Um, videos come and go. Snapchats come and go. Like there's not many movies that people cherish, that people look at and revisit and pass on to others. Right? People Other do than that Zoolander with books. and a couple of those classics. There are, but yeah, there are I get some, it. but sure. not to, not anywhere close yeah. to the same with book. Yeah. With a book, and so kind of when you write, when you put words on a piece of paper, when you even put words on a website, like that works for you yeah. for years to come, and so it it just creates this expert status amongst whoever is in charge of that network. Now, the craziest thing about that is like you don't even have to be the one who writes it. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to be the one who. Uh, is is kind of the expert in charge of choosing and curating it. Sure. I mean, Maria Popova from Brain Pickings is the best example of that. Uh, you know, she's become what was she ranked like one of the most powerful people on the internet? It's crazy, I know. And and she doesn't do anything herself. Yeah. Well, she even uh, um, 
Ariana Huffington, right? Yep. Same idea. Huffington Post. She doesn't rate. I mean, maybe she does a little bit, um, but it's it's a platform. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Cool. John, thanks so much, buddy. Again, the website is the ptdc.com. Check out what he's up to. It's awesome. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this interview. Peace out from T.O.